This is an instructional video on how to laminate materials here at the Waterville Public Library. Tools you'll need are a straight cutter, laminate, a pushing tool, scissors, a pen, and the books and a good light. Depending on the size of the book, there are different sizes of laminate you may need to use. So you'll want to measure the book against the laminate to determine which size is best. You need to have at least one inch or one full square on either side of the book, top and bottom, in order to do a good job laminating. As you can see, this laminate works this laminate would be a little too big. This is the 10 inch, this is the 12. We also have larger sizes for larger books. So when you start laminating, You're going to want to mark on your slip the date and your initials under the spot that says laminate if needed. Then we will measure the laminate. As we already determined, the 10 inch will work for this manga. So I slide the laminate into the straight cutter and I pull out enough extra to lay the book flat on the table and not on the cutter itself. You do already want to have the laminate fed through here so that you don't need to remeasure after you feed through. So I've lined the book up on the laminate as you can see here so that there is a square on the outside of the book and then I will count these squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in order to fully cover this book, I need six squares to cover the back cover, six squares to cover the front cover, and one additional square to cover the spine of the book. This book, because it lines up so perfectly, I will double the six, which is 12, and then add one, 13. For other books, all right, you may find that some books don't line up perfectly at the end of the square. In that case, if it is a book with a spine this size, you may just double the length. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, multiplied by two would be 14. And that would be enough to cover both covers and the spine of a book like this. But for a book like this one, the spine, 
is very tall. It is a extremely thick spine and would require at least two squares to cover it. So that needs to be factored in when you're measuring out your laminate. For the book we started on, We only need the 12 plus 1 is 13. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. On this line is where we would cut. So we would move that to the center of the cutter. and line up along the bottom edge. Make sure it's lined up in the middle and then cut. Once you've cut, you no longer need the cutter. The next step is to peel off the top slice of paper from the laminate. So the laminate is exposed and sticky here. This makes it easier to peel back the rest of the paper from the laminate. You will want to peel back two squares and fold them over. So we know that this book, including the outside square, was six squares long. So you would want to measure and line it up with the edge of six square. You know that this is two, one, two, another two, one, two is four. You know that your folded over portion is always going to equal four squares. Four, five, six. I want my spine to line up on this line. And you want to make sure to have one square of exposed laminate on the top, one on the bottom, and one on the side. Once that's lined up nice and evenly, you can go ahead and push down and attach the book to the little bit of laminate it is currently touching. Then you flip the book over. Use your pushing tool to seal it. This is where your light comes in handy. You want to be able to see whether or not there are any air bubbles. The best way to do that is have good lighting. Once that is sealed down, you can go ahead and start pushing the paper out from between the book and the laminate. So right now it's the book on the desk followed by the paper which is covering the laminate. What you want to do is with stir uh, Firm, steady pressure, push the paper out from between the book and the laminate. Firm, steady pressure helps 
reduce the amount of air bubbles you get. You want to pay special attention around labels and stickers. The easiest way to get air bubbles out is to push them to the closest exit, which would be the top, the bottom, or either edge of the book. Once the laminate covers the spine, you do not want to push toward the spine. If you find an air bubble, my experience has shown the best way to get it out is to use slow, firm and steady pressure using the corner of the pushing tool and just push toward the closest exit. Now that we have laminated the top cover of this book, we need to laminate the spine. You should bring the book to the corner of your desk or table, like this, right up to the edge. Then you want to pull down on the laminate that has the paper on it. Do not pull on just the paper. You want to pull on the laminate with the paper. Not here, here. While also putting pressure on the top of the book. Like so. As you're pulling down, you want to massage your thumb over the corner edge of the spine, like this. Like this. If you start in the middle, you can work the bub the air out down and out the edges this way. You want to get a nice good seal. Usually starting in the middle and working your way out one direction, going back to the middle and working your way out the other direction is optimal. You can take your tool and also seal down like that. Now you want to check your spine under the light. I have an air bubble right here and the best time to get that out is now. using the corner of my tool, slow and steady, I push that out. You do not want to push too much or too hard with this tool. You can create a hole in the laminate. Next. Again, holding 
the laminate covered with paper and not pulling on just the paper, you want to pinch the laminate and with your middle ring and pinky fingers, hold on to the pages of the book. You're going to pull the laminate tight like this. Keep it laying flat on the desk. Don't pick it up like I did. Pull it tight and then using your finger, you're going to seal down the edge. Once it's sealed down good, you're going to push out the paper like you did on the front cover with slow, firm, and steady pressure. If you see an air bubble as you go, the best time to get it out is when you see it. If you wait until the book is fully laminated, it is harder to get the bubble to an exit. So just push the paper right out. And now the laminate is fully covering the book. The next step, using your scissors, is to cut the corners off the laminate and also cut near the spine to make it so that you can fold the, pa the laminate into the cover of the book. So I'm going to get you nice and close in here for that. You can see there's a line right here on this book. This is where the pages are glued in on the book, into the book. See? You can see the color differentiation, the color differentiation from the spine of the book to the actual pages. So we want to cut straight along here. Just next to where that line is. Next, you want to cut off your corners. You want this to be cut as close as possible without actually cutting the book. The best way i found to do it is to lift the page up from the laminate using the Lift the page up with the laminate. Line your blade up to the corner of the book. Physically put the laminate onto the bottom blade of your scissors. Lined up as close as possible to the book. Just like this. So you are touching the corner with your scissors, but you are not covering the corner with your scissors. And now I'm going to cut. And here you see that I actually wasn't as close as I should be. There's a tiny bit of space. 
that still needs to, or laminate that still needs to be cut. Okay, there we have a nice close cut. All right, now you need to do the same thing on this corner. I find it's easier if you have the corner facing the bottom left. The orientation of the book and the scissors really makes a difference on how accurate and close your cut is. And then you want to cut just on the other side of this line, like so. The next step takes some finagling and contortionism. You want to flip the book so that the cover with the cut corners is flat on the desk. You would like, you should have the rest of your pages leaning on your hand. Now you will pull the laminate tight with the same hand that is holding the pages of the book up, like so. You'll seal that down with your other hand. You'll pull it tight on the edge and slide your finger across. Then you will go to the other corner, back to the middle with your finger, and slide across again and then seal down. Once that's done, you'll use your tool to really seal it into place, making sure that you get those corners nice and tight. The goal is to get the laminate as close to the cover of the book as possible without bending the book out of shape. You also don't want your laminate to overlap on the outside of the cover. You'll do that with the other two sides of this cover, like so. Your pages should always be up. If your book is laying like this, you are going to struggle to get the laminate laid down flat. It'll crinkle and wrinkle, and also it could damage the book. Let me turn the book again. Still holding the pages up with my left hand here. Pulling the laminate tight also with my left hand. And sealing with the pointer finger of my right hand. Starting in the middle. And my, working my way out. Sealed. Yeah. Now you're going to cut the edges and corners of the other side of the book. that side facing down on the desk and do the exact same thing we just did on the other side.
sometimes air bubbles and wrinkles happen. The idea is to protect the book as best as we can. Making it perfect without air bubbles or creases or wrinkles is just for the aesthetics. We do the best we can so that the book looks nice. But the real goal is to protect the book. The final step will be cutting the excess laminate off of the spine. I would start with the pages facing me using just the tips of my scissors. I lay it flat against the book and I cut just to the corner here, just like this. Then I turn the book so the pages are facing the ceiling and cutting again just to the next corner. Your scissors should be flush against the book. Then I turn the pages away from me, facing out, so the spine is facing me. And I cut from the corner out. You do not want to cut the actual book, but you do want to get as close as possible. Like this. Feel, it shouldn't feel tacky. Then we do the other side. use the pieces that I've cut off to clean the blades of my scissors. And then I'm done. My book is laminated and protected. One last thing to note is that you want your work surface to be clean. Any crumbs or dirt that is on your work surface can get stuck to the laminate as you're working. That can cause air bubbles and is trapped in there with the book. So be conscientious to use a clean workspace when you laminate. That is it. Please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.